Thank you both for enlightening us. Um, question, I have a question regarding the workplace. So many of us, especially here in New York, uh, work in secular professions. Um, we're surrounded by non-Jews or non-religious Jews. Um, you know, we, obviously there are, there are laws against anti-Semitism, against discrimination, we all know that. There are company rules against it as well, but the reality is we can't really know what people are thinking or had their at, had, you know, what their real motives are. I'd like maybe one or both of you to just give us a little bit of guidance on you know, that topic. You know, how should we be acting in, in the Jewish, uh, you know, as Jews, how should we be acting in a secular workplace? I mean, I know Jews that are religious Jews who come to a secular workplace and they take the yarmulkes off when they're, when they're working and they go home and they put the yarmulke back on. Just a little, you know, what, what are your views on that? So there, there are two points, I think. One point was you said that as far as taking off the amaga, but another point is in general how to act. I think that a Jew has to be impeccable. He has to be beyond honest. Even if everyone else is make, using the phone in the office to call their wife or to call their children or like everybody does, to make copies, <coughs> a Jew has to be, even if everyone's doing it, even if the boss doesn't care so much, a Jew has to be impeccable. They go, don't give any excuse at all that somebody should think he's dishonest that is not proper, that is not pleasant, that is not, you have to come in smiling and greet everybody and be pleasant to everybody and be positive to everybody. Should you take off your yarmulke? I can't really say that's a, it's a specific question. You're allowed to, you can, if you need to, if you feel, but you have to think about how do they look at you when you take off your yarmulke? How do they look at you? I had a guy who was going out, a fellow who was 22 or 23 years old and he started to date and he dates different girls to see, he wants to find somebody to marry. And it came the time of the year where you don't shave. And he asked me, should I shave? Because I'm going out, what's she going to look at me like I have a half-shaven beard? So I said, it depends what kind of girl you want. If you want a girl who respects that you don't shave, she wants somebody to be stringent and strict, so then she's going to, the opposite, she's going to look down at you that you're shaving. She's going to wonder, how come, you, how, why are you shaving at this time? And you can say, well, I thought uh, it wouldn't look right. She's going to feel like you're not so strong about yourself. So really, you have to have standards, and you have to stand up for what you feel. And if you feel that if you go to a place where the boss would tell you not to come with the yarmulke, so maybe, you know, if you want that job so much, I would feel a little bit personal, it's my own personal feeling, I'd feel like I wouldn't want to work in such a place. I want the person to respect me for who I am. I'm not flaunting it, I'm not telling them to wear yarmulkes, I'm not wearing a crazy yarmulke that has a thing on top that spins, that, that stands out like who knows what. I'm a very pleasant person, hopefully, and I'm respectful, and I'm clean, I have hygiene, and I respect everybody else's desires and wishes in the office. I, I, uh, there's a dinner, there's a, a Christmas party, I come to the Christmas party, the whole office comes, it doesn't mean I have to eat their food, it doesn't mean I have to go to bow down on the floor to say a prayer, but I have to be part of the program if I want to be part of the program. So I would go out of my way to make sure that I'm in perfect in every, every area. And that's why I think we owe that, not only in the business, in the street, when you walk in the street, people look at you. If you represent a Jew, if you're wearing a baseball cap, I was a kid and I lived in the Catskills, and my parents didn't like, didn't like me to wear a yarmulke in the street because you, you're not perfect enough. Put on a baseball cap, so therefore they don't look at you. you know, but if I'm wearing a yarmulke, I have to act like I'm wearing a yarmulke. Yeah. <laughs> I, wore the, I wore the Yankees, no matter what, it had to be the Yankees, and the cats was on cats. Yeah. But you have to act in a way that people look up to you, they don't have any excuse to look down at you. Even if, you know, I, I look at people also, I feel bad that why do they do certain things, why can't they be a little better? They're not, they're not thinking so much. I don't look down at them, I don't uh, look at them terribly, but I, I wish that they would think more. That's also, if we thought before we spoke, if we thought before we acted, what does somebody else look at what I'm doing? If I think like that, I'm sure it would be a very good workplace and it would be a better relationship between all the people of the world, which is what it should be. I agree with Rabbi D. That's not okay. However, I have two short, <laughs> short stories to share. Can we get that on paper? With, I have two quick stories, short stories to share with you. A fellow was going to the, entering the workforce and um, he came to his local rabbi, who was the rabbi in Camden, New Jersey, Rabbi Riff, and he asked him for guidance. He was going to work in the some government agency, I think it was the Social Security Administration many years ago. And he said, you know, I'm going to get into situations where I have to, where I have to um, invite me to the company Christmas party, other situations. How am I going to 
deal with them? How should I deal with them? How should I either avoid them or how should I deal with them? And the rabbi suggested to him that he don a frock and a Hamburg. And he behave in a way that's appropriate for that mode of dress. In other words, you behave in, as, as a rabbi, carry himself as a rabbi, and nobody will, and he'll avoid most of the uncomfortable situations. P.S., that's what he did. Uh, when he retired, he took off his frock, and, and his rabbi told him he can't do that. You know, it was 30 years later, he was wearing a frock in a Hamburg, and now he started, he said, I left work, I don't have to wear a frock anymore, and I could dress like a regular person. He said, no, no, you don't do that. You've been dressing like this, this is the way you can get dressed. The other story is, the dean of, of Chafetz Chaim Yeshiva in Queens was approached by one of his students. All his fellow's classmates had become deans of institutions, they'd become teachers, they'd become very, they began having impact on their communities, and he was an accountant in a, in a firm in Manhattan. And he came to his rabbi, he said he was, all, he was all depressed, you know, he said, I'm a failure, you know, all these guys are out there changing the world, and me, I'm not doing anything. And the rabbi said, let me ask you a question. He said, when you walk down the hall, people are talking, they're joking around, they're at the water cooler. Do they speak, do they generally speak appropriately? Do they make, you know, clean jokes, stuff like that? He says, no. He says, when you're around, do they speak the same way as they do when you're not around? He goes, no, when I'm around, they, they don't say off any off-color jokes. He said, think about it. Think about the impact you're having. But your very presence, being there, as a, as, a, as a person who represents ethical behavior, moral behavior, you're an honest person. Like D said, this guy was consistent. He did everything properly. He didn't act improperly. He was able, he said, just think about it. You're bringing holiness everywhere you walk. These guys are in the base measures. They're in the study hall teaching. They're in classroom teaching. And you're going out there and like Rabbi D said, we can bring holiness wherever we go, wherever we are, if we act by that properly. Thank you. Thank you, for you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Davidowitz, Rabbi Biederman. And uh, please join us again next week. Rabbi Mintz will be back. I'm sure we'll have a lot of things.